So welcome along to our next episode of the iPhotography podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you are a returning listener or if you're brand new to this, this is your first time you are hearing the voice of Stephen. I'm one of the iPhotography tutors. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can also see that I've got another tutor with us today, who's Emily. Hi, lovely to be here. Always happy to chat about camera gadgets. So today, that's exactly what we're talking Spoiler. about. That's it. Spoiler alert. Thank you. You jumped ahead. That's brilliant. But that's it. We like to kind of kick things off, get right into it. No kind of long intros, nitty gritties, etc. Let's just get right into it. And Emily is the queen of gadgets. So I think you are the perfect person to uh, to kind of bring along. And I suppose just kind of having a chat about different things that you have in your camera bag, little things that you find are quite useful that maybe aren't necessarily things that people think about straight away thinking, you know, I need to have that. You've got my camera, got my lenses, got my cards some flash, etc. But what are the maybe smaller items that are worthwhile sticking in your bag and what benefits they've got that you've experienced so yeah I think you, you've come up with a bit of a list already of about kind of five or six different things um that you know you you found really really useful in your experience so you know let's just kind of kick it off from the top what what's your one kind of special gadget that you have in your camera equipment I just love um, wasting money on, on lots of gadgets. No, some, <laughs> what I wanted to say before we started is sometimes, you know, there's a million and one things that you can buy and it can be tempted to just splash your money on loads of different things. And I think some things are well worth investing in and some things aren't. And my criteria, just to keep myself from going mad and buying too much, <laughs> is thinking about the outcome in the photograph if it makes a difference to the actual photograph itself what whether it's adding a practical effect or if it enables me to take something that's a little bit unconventional that's the kind of gadgets that i'm into and that's what i'd like to talk about now um one of those my favorite and it's dead easy to keep in your camera bag is uh prisms so if you don't know what a, a prism is, it's um, you come in all different shapes and sizes. I have a triangular prism, uh, which is sort of like, I don't know, 10 inches long. It's made of glass and it's triangular and you can put it over your lens and create reflections and refractions and just all kinds of crazy kaleidoscope effects. You can buy them very, very cheaply. And you can buy different styles as well, like the, the spherical, uh, the glass orbs and things are very, very good. Have you used any of those, Stephen? I, I have, yeah. I'm thinking about them now. I, I've, I've got, um, um, well, not, yeah, uh, prisms, that's the word I'm looking for. I've gone completely off now, just listening to you thinking, yeah, I like that as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> prisms, I've got one. Um, the one thing I will say um, is that, it's really important, you probably may have kind of come to this anyway, about getting a decent quality one, because it's all about the glass that it's cut with, obviously kind of lower quality glass that's maybe a bit misted inside, it's going to make it harder and harder for you to actually be able to kind of see through that glass and get the really kind of good distortion that, that you're looking for from it. But yeah, you're right, I've got one, it's about maybe kind of seven or eight inches, and you can get them on eBay, they're not massively expensive still, we're not talking hundreds of pounds in any way, but the effect that it gives it can just change you know the corner of an image you know a slight angle to it because you can totally customize how you have it can't you you know just it's all down to how you hold it and i suppose every every way that you do it and every shot that you take is totally unique for that effect isn't it yeah and and oh creatively it's so good you know if, if you wanted to create your own reflections and add symmetry to an image you can make mirrors uh, inside your composition and one thing that I did use one for actually for a paid job was I was taking bridal portraiture in the morning and the room was a mess and it was tiny so I had the bride by the window and in the back of the frame all I could see was just a mess in the room <laughs> so I put the prism up and it kind of reflected the window on both sides in a really yeah. sort of interesting way uh, so it got rid of distractions it was an interesting but you were just sort of covering the mess thing. and That's it got genius. rid of the mess less time to photoshop then afterwards isn't it well so. exactly but it looks stylized it'll look modern i imagine as well so if you're, yeah. if you're watching this on youtube and um, if we've got any pictures we can kind of this point we'll throw them up here as well but um but yeah i i think the the great the one i saw one a couple of years ago and i don't know i can't remember the name of it and i can't remember the company um <clears> that were making it but imagine a knuckle duster 
And then on top of the knuckle duster is like a circle filter shape. And inside that was like a, a prism, but it was like a flat one. So it was more like a, a fractal. Um, and it had this lovely kind of patination on it. And basically, yeah, you, you held it through your knuckles and basically held it in front of the lens and you created that kind of fractal distortion effect. Um, but you're right, there are so many variations of like different objects that you've got that you can kind of create that in. Um, it's so worth checking out because as you say, the, the effect is unique. It can be used to kind of just make a tricky image a little bit more effective or a little bit more interesting, but it, it's just very, very simple to use, isn't it? You don't necessarily need, there's no, you know, you have to hold it here to get this, that, and the other as well. You just toy around with it a little bit. And I think that's, that's the fun of it really, isn't it? It makes it, you know, you don't know what's, what it's going to come out like until you try it. Absolutely. And the one tip, um, aside from the quality of the glass, which you are very right to, to say, uh, one tip when you are buying it is consider how long it needs to be to cover the lens that you want to use it with. Because I was yeah. a bit of a cheapskate and I bought one that was like tiny. <laughs> and then you, your thumb ends up in the image. <laughs> I was going to say you've got half a hand in the shot and then literally about two inches of uh, prism. Yeah. yeah so, so don't cool. be a cheapskate like me. Uh, consider how long it needs to be so it covers <laughs> your lens entirely. Anyway. No, I fully, fully agree. I, totally, I love that. Just a giant thumb in the side of me picture yeah creative <laughs> it's song. art my dear it's art it is yes. <laughs> right Priceless. what else would you have then in your uh your your gadget bag let's say go go gadget girl okay yeah I'm terrible I am terrible my office is just looking like a Jessup's warehouse at the moment <laughs> um what I have accumulated a great embarrassing number of is different variations of LED panel lights. Mm -hmm. Now I have teeny tiny ones that, that do bright white lights. So you can, if you're doing sort of indoor photography or product photography, you can sort of very easily create a little mini studio on your desk. But the ones I think most people will get the most fun out of are the ones that will do different colors, the RGB ones. Mm -hmm. So you have sort of a, I don't know, a phone sized panel they're not very big and you do the white light so it can be used as a portrait light or for anything else but then you can click through and see all the different colors so you could have a green light a blue light a purple light and I have used these uh, so much for um, sort of spilling interesting colored lights behind uh, models during portraiture adding in interesting lighting to product photography uh, even using them like by hand for light painting there's mm. so many uses for them and as I say I'm a little bit addicted to buying them <laughs> <laughs> just like your house well funny you should say that because <laughs> I mean, I recently bought a ring light for, for like recording any kind of live events and any video here. Um, it, it just it just makes it a little bit easier because some of the lights we've got are kind of around the room are a bit further away. But whilst I was buying that, I also bought an LED bulb um, and it's a coloured one. So you basically can go, you can download an app, sync it up um, and then basically yeah, you can change the colour of it. So it's it's primarily used in household, but I thought it'd be really cool because I've literally just got this plain white wall behind me and I thought it's not maybe the most interesting kind of colour. So I thought maybe I could spice it up a little bit. And instead of actually getting it to go on a lamp, I just got a cord which has a bulb attachment at the end. So it's basically just a kind of like a three metre rope with a bulb attachment, fix it in there and I can switch it on and off, but I can move it wherever I want within obviously realms of the the plug um but i can use it around products in the background of portraits just anywhere whether i'm at home or i'm at the office or at the studio as long as i've got a plug connection and i'm not a few you know a few meters away from it i can literally have whatever color i want and i say it oh yeah totally I've, I've, got I've got them i've got them in here <laughs> Yeah, it uh, awesome. doesn't work well for the podcast, but it'll work well. I was going to say, YouTube you're gonna, yeah, if you're listening to I have, the podcast, um, <laughs> check the out Philips, the YouTube video of it. <laughs> I have the Philips Hue lights in here. Ah. Um, so I've got them in the lamps and stuff. So it's a really cool app and you can really change if, if you take in any product photography in here or if you're doing any video stuff or, or photos. It's so handy just to be able to control the color balance in the room and use it creatively. Oh, my God. I so, should have yeah. put mine on if I knew we were talking about this and we could have like a mini <laughs> disco. You could like have little different colors in there and just tap on our phones throughout. And we've gone through the whole <laughs> <it>. rainbow. <laughs> I know. So, but, but, but yeah, it, overall, you would you'd recommend them as a, a good photography gadget. I mean, would you say there's a, a good starting size or, you know, yeah. just... I, I like them um, sort of phone size, like iPhone size a little bit. Yeah. Bigger. Um, 
and you, you, they're all battery operated so you just sort of charge them as you would a camera battery and then you can put them on tripods or on light stands or, or mount them and hold them they're so versatile and mm. I, I would recommend springing for the ones that do the different colors as well as the white light yeah. because there's so many times that i've used it even pre Philips hue lights if you want to spruce up your zoom chat you can stick a colored light behind <laughs> you and you know they're, they're, they're really good they're very portable because they are battery operated yeah. uh, and they do come in all different shapes and sizes and there's so many different price points as well so yeah. led panel lights particularly the rgb ones for the win get it get it in your bag get it in your bag yeah right so two down what's next on your list this is a curveball one and it does depend on what camera brand you have but i do think you can get something similar on most and this is a lens cap lens because before we just started you hadn't really heard of, of the joys I of a lens cap lens never, i literally thought you'd taken your lens cap and poked a hole in it or something like that and now <laughs> i see it i am still convinced i'm correct <laughs> yeah, so it's a very affordable lens the one i have is for my lumix camera but it's an olympus lens because you can use them on both um and it's a 15 millimeter lens and it's literally the size of a lens cap so when you take your lens off an slr and you have that teeny tiny circle of plastic this is what you're replacing with a lens wow. and I, I often joke that um it's the worst lens i own but it's the <laughs> best photograph i've ever got out of a lens cap <laughs> so which, whichever way you want to look at it it's good fun uh they're, they're, they're not the best you know it's manual focus it's got a set focus point it's f8 constant but for 30 quid and for something that you can just keep on your camera at all times, I have had so much fun with this lens. Yeah. It really does, uh, you know, you just take your camera out and off you go straight away. Uh, and if you, if... Yeah, sorry. I, was just, I, was, I think that you just spot on with it because it's like, it's a little bit like the prisms in a way that it's obviously it's going to have a, a level of distortion with the prisms that it's not going to necessarily kind of look everything's going to look super sharp but that's not the point of it and the same with that you know your lens cap lens as well it's it's about fun it's about creativity you know it's not about kind of always having super pin sharp shots you know it, obviously it's about the content more than anything anyway but I, I think that's a great little thing because you know some people that maybe just get bored of the lens that they've got want to get something new haven't got a lot of cash because yeah lenses aren't the cheapest thing these days um but what a great kind of little gadget so uh, are you are you aware that it's available on other brands or is it lumix panasonic primarily so I've, I've had them for micro four thirds so if you've got a lumix or, a, or an olympus you're sorted but i do think they're on the sony aps-c cameras as well Ooh. and uh, if you look on the lomography site um they have loads of cool retro plasticky fun lenses for all yes. different brands uh, that's another rabbit hole i could probably fall down and spend too I was much money say... <laughs> I feel like we can go down it now by talking about it, but I, I sense already. I think this is uh, maybe a topic for for a slightly separate podcast because I've had them in the past. I've actually got some Lomography cameras sat on a shelf, um, and I, I fully rate them. I love the designs of them and the style of them, but the fact that now you can translate them into um, digital, it's great because yeah, the, they're pretty cheap. You know, they do give a, a cheap effect, but that's the fun of it and that's what you've got to look at it you know it's, yes. it's a fun tool that you could pass the camera to your kids and and you know they could have a and bit of a play works. with it yeah that's yeah. it you don't have to worry about it and you know what it's not the worst I mean it's the worst lens because it's not like a real lens but it's not as bad as you think uh, it does have sort of a baked in vignette uh, and because it's an f8 you really do want to use it on a bright day yeah but it, it makes my camera literally so pocketable because there's no lens on the yeah. front um, so whenever I'm out and about on holiday, I'll just keep that in my pocket and it turns a really good camera into basically a compact camera because you don't have the lens sticking out at the front. Yeah, that's no, genius. So there I'm you go. Fan. Well, that's it. I'll have a look. Now you said it was on Sony APS-C. I've got one of those and I'm like, right, I, I, want, I want them now. After doing these podcasts today, there's there's about three or four different lenses I want to buy. I'm going yes. to stop doing them and talking to you guys. Spend the money, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, there is a fisheye one and a 15 mil one on Micro Four Thirds. And the fisheye one, the community says, is brilliant but i went yeah. for the other one <laughs> so See, yeah <laughs> I, I would i mean as much as i'm i'm yeah i'm not a big fan of the 
the fish I kind of affect. I think if, yeah, if you get the right subject, it can look really, really cool as well. But I'd just be interested to see it really, because I've used to have one on a lamography camera and using it on film as well. And especially sometimes expired film or, you know, the, the quirky kind of types of films that they can have. Um, it really works together. You know, you get that kind of strangeness of the, the weird focal length, um, as well as, a, you know, this kind of funny mix of film as well. But the two of them work together to create this really weird and distorted shot. But it's totally unique. It's not like shooting it perfectly and crisply on a digital camera and getting all your megapixels and your raw file perfect. It's just made to be fun, you know, and, you know, just exactly what photography is. It's an exploration of art, really. So I, I'm, my, I'm fully behind it. My next pick is very similar to exactly what you were just saying, um, which is another thing I think I'm introducing you to, which Ooh. is a mist filter. A mist? Heard of oh, well, literally, is it, <laughs> is it a mystery filter now? <laughs> <laughs> what does this filter do? So, <laughs> primarily, <laughs> uh, you will you will have seen the effect, whether you know it or not, in a lot of films and a lot of uh, videography. But it's becoming more and more popular in photography, which is why I've I've got one. And um, what a mist filter does is it takes off that clinical sharp digital look and just softens it all a little bit so your highlights will bloom and, and just sort of soften away you know like if you've seen in a film where they're in like um like there's there's light trails coming through the window and yeah. all the lights really soft and ethereal it's that kind of effect and it works so well for night photography as well you know like with the nighttime signs and you know because of all all the, the soft fall off of all the light just makes it look so nice and it's really good for skin tones as well so it's lovely for portraiture what does it do i'm just thinking in translating it to to night photography i know you know one of the biggest problems a lot of people will suffer with is noise but if you're effectively putting something on front of the lens that's going to soften the light does that have an effect on the noise as well have you noticed that it, it softens that color um noise or grain or anything like that yeah it does to a degree you do see it much more in the highlights than the shadows yeah um but it does and you can get them in different strengths as well i've just got a moderate uh, I think it's a quarter strength, but you can get a set where it's it can yeah. go from very extreme to very subtle. And a lot of people now, particularly if you are photographing people all the time or if you are shooting with interesting lighting, um, just keep them on because it's such a lovely, pleasing effect. And um, it's something that I've, I've only recently got into, but I am a, a big fan of. Yeah. yeah. The ones I have are made by Freewell, uh, but other brands are available. There we go. We're not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we will be. You never know. Maybe they'll be listening to this and thinking, yeah, that's a damn good advertisement. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, you're right. I, I'd not I'd not heard of them before. So I mean, yeah, I've seen the effects, but I, I, in my head, I can envisage where, you know, they probably work well. And I think I can almost think about whether the styles, uh, um, you know, or photographs they look like. I can imagine like vintage portraits for people that really want that old yeah. style kind of maybe going back to like 50s, 60s type of kind of film shots, possibly what would uh, would work well with it really. So, but that would be great. You know, if you've got any kind of images that have, uh, you've taken that have been used for that. Again, if you're watching this, um, this video or this podcast on YouTube, we'll, we'll try and kind of throw some images up at the same time as well. Um, Brill, that's that's superb. Something again, another thing that I've learned as well. But come on, isn't it funny though? We've come all this way to get the most pristine, big megapixels <laughs> professional cameras, and the last two, it's like plasticky lens and a mist filter <laughs> to add more distortion into your images. It's this so funny how it goes full circle, isn't it? We're, we're not. It, it is. It's so strange that we were talking about it on another podcast about how we we've kind of come full circle that there has been a you know a shoot to get those images that are crystal clear and there'll still be fans of it that people will absolutely love to make sure they've got the highest quality glass those lovely canon l lenses and all that but there is also still a market i think for people that just want to have fun with it they, they love exploring retro things that especially younger generations who are never part of it first time rounds you know it's just like fashion they, they want to experience things that they've never seen before even though other people think well hang on that was we've only done that 50 60 years ago and I, I think it's great that they kind of get recycled a little bit because they get improved ever so slightly and obviously they then get manufactured for 
current digital cameras as well. So you don't have to go and, you know, buy an old 35 mil camera to use these old lenses. There'll be a, an adaptation for it. But yeah, I, this is what the, the joy of photography is. It's not about spending thousands and thousands of pounds that you blatantly have on lots of panels and lots of lights. <laughs> but <laughs> there is a purpose for that separately. Yeah, but... I do know the vintage lenses. I know it doesn't quite count to what we're talking about, but one of my favorite lenses is a, a really old Canon FD uh, 120 mil f 2.8 which I got for 130 quid which for portrait lenses is pretty cheap yeah and it's pretty old and it I've adapted it to micro four thirds but it will work on full frame as well and the results are very similar to the mist filters actually it's very diffuse very pleasing for yeah. skin tones sometimes you can really drop on with vintage lenses I love them I've, I've seen it I say grow in popularity, but mm -hmm. a lot of people exploring that combination of getting an old film lens, getting the right mount or adapter for the current camera, throw it all together and see what happens. And I think mm -hmm. it's brilliant that you can kind of cross combine these, these things now as well. That, I think that's that, that kind of mount adapter, et cetera. Um, they, they've just changed the game entirely. And it's lovely to see because I think it, especially with manual focus, it, it teaches you a lot more patience about what you're seeing. And again, if it's got like aperture rings on them as well, you know, it teaches you a lot more about the, the, the craft of the art somewhat as well. Um, but yeah, I just think some of them just look so cool in terms of design as well. They're really, really sweet. Yeah, I'm a fan. I, again, I'm just looking around my room, at Jessup's warehouse again. I've got <laughs> so many manual lenses all around me. It's terrible. I've got problems, Stephen. I've got problems. Uh, so let's move on to another gadget that I love. <laughs> is, this, is this another lens by any chance? It is, actually. <laughs> oh, my Do you know, God. <laughs> um, my, my friends used to call me lenses like lenses Lowry, because I would never leave uh, the house without a bag full of lenses. Get your lenses, hurry up, because I was always miles behind them while they were walking when we were on holiday. Emily Lensery, that's what your new name is. Yeah, oh, I like that. That's what they should have gone with. That's much better. There so, go. do you know the old adage? The best uh, camera you have is the one that you have with you. And what do we have with us all the time? Ah, our mobile phones. Now, there are some very, very high quality screw on iPhone and Android lenses that I absolutely love. I have a set from a brand called Sandmark and they actually have, uh, they, have they supply you with a case for your phone. So you can literally just screw on these proper little metal lenses. They're so cute. And I have a macro lens, a zoom lens, a wide angle lens, a fisheye lens and an anamorphic lens. Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah. So if you're out and about, it, it's it's the size of maybe a 50 pence piece mm -hmm. to stick in your pocket. And if you keep the case on all the time, all you need to do is screw on the lens and suddenly you've got so many more options available to you. It's so cool. That's but I mean, I imagine the the macro would be a really good one because I appreciate obviously you can zoom in, et cetera, on the phones. But I, I, I never find zoom quality on any phone camera as ones that I've used anyway are any good at all. So I just must stay away from that. But the fact to be able to be able to have some sort of, you know, magnification through macro, that would be really cool. They are brilliant. In fact, um, on the skill track video that I did for macro photography, that's the lens that I, I used for the... Uh, we're talking eye photography here, Stephen. Do you want oh, to explain yes. what I just said? Of course. <laughs> well, there we go. If this just garbled noise and you don't know what Emily's just said and you think she's gone into a foreign language, you need to join eye photography to find out a little bit more. Um, our skill track videos, I'll take the opportunity to tell everybody about it as well, is part of our eye photography plus um, monthly or annual membership where every month you get a new video and it's basically kind of a, a photography video, a training video going through lots of different disciplines. And this is one that Emily's talking about from, was it your macro photography one? It was indeed, yes. Yeah. Um, I wanted to make it accessible to everyone because I know macro photography can be quite blooming expensive as I have several macro lenses. <laughs> um, so I thought if I use one on a phone, it, it's, it's affordable and it shows you the capabilities that anyone can get into that style of photography without spending the earth. So it was, yeah. it was a really cool um, sort of skill track and it's great to just any excuse to get my gadgets out you know what I'm like oh yeah I mean so you can you can pretty much get the, these kits like for any phones can't you they're, they're yeah totally so universal, you, yeah so you've got your they come with um a clip so if if they don't supply the case to your specific brand you can literally just clip 
that lens over your camera lens on your phone but it does work so well if you have um, you know like a, an iphone or a samsung or something that's a little bit more popular yeah then you can literally get the exact case that you need and they literally screw on so it's very very cool that's genius and do you use them a fair amount I do. In fact, whenever whenever I used to commute to Liverpool, I would always take a different one each day and try and challenge myself when I was walking through the city to to, to take some photographs of the city. The fisheye one worked really well for the for like the architecture, and yeah. then the, the slightly more zoomed in one was very good for street photography and things. Uh, it's true. very surprising the quality you can get out of them. I really do rate them. Yeah, yeah. I just say because it's it's you've you've got it all the time. You've got your phone with you twenty four seven, and you know, given the size of these things, you know, from what what you've been showing, they can literally just flip into your pocket. It's not as if you've got to like take your whole camera bag out with you, but you've got a nice little array of lenses and clip on and go. By the sounds of it, it it's, yeah, it's it's great. It and the kind of... proper metal build quality and really high quality glass, you know, oh, right. people think that it is quite gimmicky. And I was on the fence until I, I tried them myself. And now it's like, I'm going to buy every single one that comes out. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's, that's perfect. I mean, if someone can, you know, is kind of cornering the market of decent quality, because like, yeah, I've seen them all over eBay, you know, the little kind of clip on ones, etc. And I've kind of like been a bit, I've just been tempted and it's not been expensive at all. But I'm thinking because they're not expensive, they are going to be cheap you know you get what you pay for but you know ultimately what, what kind of prices are you talking roughly you know for for a set what could somebody expect to pay oh the ones that i have a sandmark uh, it's a very very good brand other brands are available um and i believe they're about 99 quid per lens but i think they have bundles throughout the year so it might be like 200 quid and you'll get three yeah. or something like that and some of them are cheaper some of them are more expensive the anamorphic one i think was a little bit more pricey whereas the macro one was cheaper uh, uh so yeah, just just have a look through as you say you know you buy cheap you buy twice yeah. but if 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 it really makes you creative on your commute or if if it may, it means that you have a high quality lens with you all the time that you can just carry around with you. I think mm -hmm. it's worth its weight in gold. Oh yeah, I, I don't think. I mean, just looking at it in the world of photography, two hundred pounds is nothing. You know, you get you could get a lens. It, it may be all right, but it won't be the world's greatest lens. But thinking the fact that people now pay, nowadays pay seven eight hundred pounds for a phone to begin with, that's like you know your camera, and if it's the only one that you're using, if you don't have a dedicated DSLR or mirrorless or something like that, you know, spending 200 pounds um, for a couple of high quality lenses for your phone, you know, it's dedicated for your phone. It'd be brilliant. You know, I don't, I, I think I that's a good a quick, investment. Just had a quick Google to check. I wasn't uh, completely overshooting. <laughs> and you can currently at the moment, prices vary. Telephoto lens, wide angle lens, macro lens, and a fisheye lens, and a case for 212 quid from Soundmark. <laughs> Uh, and they are genuinely really, really good quality. And they come with cute little lens caps and everything. That is. Oh, that, that's what the £12 <laughs> is on the end. It's 200 quid for everything else and £12 for the lens caps. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, anyway. I, just, I think it's, you know, it's, you know, obviously I've never tried them before, but just in terms of a pricing point, you know, because people do increasingly use their phone more and more to be taking pictures of. So why not make the best version of that photograph possible on that device by using, you know, decent quality glass? So, yeah, good call. Good call. Yes, I uh, I am a fan. So we're down to I had a top tip sort of pick, Go for uh, it. which is uh, step up or step down rings for your filters. Uh -huh. So uh, when investing in filters, uh, you generally choose the, the screw on ones that are a certain size for whichever lens you assume you'll use it most on. But you can buy step down filters. So if you buy a larger size and then buy, use the, the, the step down rings, you can then use that same filter on many more lenses without buying loads of filters. So it's yes. a good cost effective way of, of keeping the price down when investing in filters. Yeah, fully behind you. I've got a set. So yeah, I hands hands open, kind of fully admitted. I'm I would definitely recommend step up, step down filters, whichever they want to call them. Because I the one thing I found, though I've not actually done it for this purpose, um, but if you are lending, borrowing, lending uh, lend, uh, filters off other people uh, when you're out yeah. and about, if you're out on a group trip or something like that. We had to do that in London, didn't we, when we, we were doing photo indeed. walks. 
the it. photography photo walks are awesome, by the way. Well, there we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, Stephen, you know, blistering sunshine in the middle of August, and Stephen was the only one with the foresight to actually bring a set of filters. <laughs> <laughs> and he handily had all of the step down rings. So if, if I needed to lend one off him, I could find the appropriate size for my lens and we could both use the same equipment. And That's the students it. did as well. You, you, yeah. you showed the students how to use them as well. It's so. I mean, I'm not. I'm not long bought them before that. Um, mm. But it's simply because I had a few different lenses. I bought a wide out of fifty mil, so we had different uh, thread size and different lenses. And I thought, I'm not buying, you know, like four or five ND lenses for different. You know, they're going to cost you know way more. Step up, step down filters, sorted it, and what they were maybe 15, 20 pounds max. I'm sure you can spend more, et cetera, on them as well. But literally, you just need them to be able to kind of fit the front thread size, screw that on, and screw the filter on, and you're away. So the fact that you can kind of switch and, and borrow off other people is brilliant. But the fact that you only need one set of good quality filters and you can use them across all different uh, your lenses. I think, I think that, you know, it's essential really, because whether you're a portrait photographer, you're probably going to always, well, not always, but most of the time have a polarizer or like a UV filter on, even if it's just for protection of your lenses, um, you know, landscape photographers, predominantly I'd say are going to be using like ND filters again polarizers ND grads as well um you know like with your mist filter as well and you know your star filters if you're getting a little bit more creative there's tons of different filters to be using across all different disciplines so I can't see any type of photography that that wouldn't come across them you know within a, a year's period of photography so I think that you know for what they are for the price of them you know just just get them don't even quibble over it just get it and you'll you'll find a purpose for it I think in the end won't you Oh yeah, I think it's so handy. But that just reminded me, I, I recently bought uh, an 85mm prime lens and I was so happy to realise that it was a 77mm size, which is the same size as my stock lens. So I was like, uh, yes, I don't have to, <laughs> like I can quickly do it on these two. Um, I just wish everyone had a standard size for lenses. I know that wouldn't make uh, any sense, but it'd be so handy. Uh, it, but yeah, the step, step down rings, so handy. Super. And then finally, which we're going into a little bit of a tangent, um, it's still photography, but it's a grey area in time lapse. I have an ungodly amount of time lapse gadgets. I have a uh, little sort of literally it looks like an egg timer with um, <laughs> like a mount on. And it just means that you can it'll slowly over a period of time rotate your camera from left to right or even in a complete circle and you can take photographs every 5, 10, 15 seconds and then create time-lapse footage from that. That's good. Could, um, could it make um, like panoramas as well, you know, if you really oh, want yeah. to go super wide landscapes? Um, yeah, I know, I know some cameras that. have physical panorama modes built in when you literally just have to kind of follow the screen and, and pan around but there's always that human element to it so if it can be locked down I think that's cracking but it, it can do that as well can't it? It can yeah but for smaller and lighter cameras if you do want to uh, get into time lapse you can get these sort of egg timery things very cheap. One thing to think though is when I was taking it through airport security it started ticking <laughs> 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 and it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so oh uh, God, yeah just 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 make sure it's <laughs> just... all reset before you go through airport security don't do <laughs> what emily do you, does um, do they so what do they mount onto a tripod and then your camera on top how, how does that yes so imagine it's like a, an egg timer but it's sort of flat so on the top you have the mount where you would stick your camera so it's like a tripod mount and then the bottom is a tripod screw mount so you can either just put the, the timer thing on the ground or onto a gorilla pod or a tripod or anything like that that's genius. So that's yeah. it. I've, I've seen, you know, a lot of cameras that have like remote controls that you can kind of, you know, use your camera from, you know, uh, you know run it from your phone, et cetera, as well, and kind of have short release cables as well. But that's one thing I've, I've never really kind of considered to be able to, to kind of use, you know, basically leave your camera and do its own job there as well. But can you set it so it does, so maybe just kind of goes 90 degrees or can it only do like a 360? Yeah, so you can you can set it to do half or all the way round. Yeah. Um, but it's really just if you want it to go all the way round, leave it for twice as long. Um, uh, or you can, you know, change the speed of it. It is, you know, it's basic. It's 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 a mechanical thing without any sort of programmable elements, but you can buy programmable ones. I have gimbals and, and electronic sliders, which are very, very good for time lapse as well. And then you can really get into the minutiae of, I want it to go from this set point to this set point for 45 minutes and take a photograph 
Oh my you know, God. however many you want. It's so good. Um, if, if you do have the camera and, and you do want to get into time lapse, it's not as overwhelming as you think. And you can get so many cool uh, little videos out of it by doing time lapse photography. I think it's really, really good. It's probably something we'll have to explore at some point in an actual uh, tutorial video because it's, <laughs> as you say, it's it still kind of fits within the realm of photography because you're still taking an image. It's just then what you're doing with them afterwards, creating that. I suppose it's like a stop motion effect really, isn't it? Mm. I've seen a lot of it online on, on TikTok as well, that people are literally just, just doing it with their phones in some instances as well. But I think there is a nice smoothness to it when you've got a device, as you say, that's locked off and you can guarantee you pretty much, you know, you, you can you can decide as to where it's going to be taking the pictures at each point as well. And I think it just gives you that extra level of kind of professionalism as well but I mean do you have you ever used it like within your professional role or is it is it more of a, a kind of a creative you know uh, gadget that you've just used on personal time yeah uh, seldom um for sort of wedding films and things do I need a time lapse sometimes I've done it if, if um the venue's gorgeous and it's a cloudy day and we want to get the sunset behind the venue for an establishing shot but I wouldn't necessarily do a motion time lapse for that I'd probably just leave it on a tripod just it's like, yeah. more so for travel photography and I love doing like travel videos and I think if you're sat as, as I imagine we both would on holiday, if you're sat for an hour and a half watching the sunset taking photographs, if you have a, a, sec, a second little camera or a GoPro or something, leave that doing a motion time lapse, you get twice as much footage for your time. Oh, cool. So I often leave one time lapsing as I'm doing my other business. Uh, well, I was going to say, the bit is literally like having an assistant there, isn't it? Doing a, a second job, but uh, you know, you don't have to pay them as much <laughs> yeah, at all. It's great. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very much a, a believer of, you know, if, if you're going to go to a place and spend a lot of time there, if you do have two cameras, automate one and get a time lapse, and then you can do things and move around, and then you've got more ways to remember the moment. Yeah, isn't that brilliant? That's That's fantastic. That's not something I'd ever considered you know given that things like phones have those panorama modes built in you just think you know well, that's that's the standard but the fact that there is an, an alternative option for you know dedicated cameras your dslrs and such as well it, it's great to know that you know the options are out there just to be creative in a in a different way really and get you know untie yourself from the phone and ultimately get a better quality image overall because yeah there, there is always a better quality with between dedicated cameras than phones anyway but um that's brilliant so do we do we think we've have you reach the bottom of your gadget bag at the minute or is there is there anything yes. else <laughs> uh, that about covers it I've got a couple of little very cheap um fun things to play with like tiny led lights for light painting I yeah. found them around um bonfire night and halloween one year and it's literally like it was dead cheap it was like five quid for 20 and it's a tiny different colored led light that like had an elastic bit that fit on your fingers yes. have you seen them I've, I've got well i've got i've had the exact same thing we should call them finger lights and yeah yeah, yeah. No, exactly and, and you, you know you get like a little red light or a little blue light and you can use those to to light paint and there's no reason why you can't stick one of those in your bag because it's yeah. tiny um and i i think you know little things like that if you just, when you're out and about in like pound shops or, you know, just out and about shopping, if, if you, if you keep your eye tuned to those little things, there's so many creative things you can find very cheaply, I think. Yeah, that, I think you're right. I, I do not say purposely go looking for them, but when I'm browsing those sections where it's basically just junk, that's, that's the best way I can describe yeah. it. I go looking for light and glass. And those are the two things that you can use to affect, you know, your, your photograph because basically you're using glass and light to capture your image. So anything you can use to distort it, um, like filters, um, you know, colours, things that you can put in front of the lenses that have holes in, like colanders and, you know, loads of different things you can get. Um, we were just talking about it before we came on air about the lens baby, the circular filters that you basically kind of put in front of your lens um, and they have a shape cut out of them. So maybe a star shape, and then if you're shooting uh, like very, very kind of uh, shallow depth of field, that kind of the bokeh in the background can change the shape of that bokeh to be whatever the shape is coming through the lens. So there, there is tons. I, mean, I imagine we can go on for hours with other gadgets that that could be available and, and could be really, really useful. But I think those, what, those kind of six or seven that we've, we've gone through are absolutely genius. You know, there's ones in there that I would recommend everybody has. 
Um, I think that the lights, the panel lights are really, really good. The prisms are a great idea. The lens cap lenses, I'm going to have to research more because I want to know more about them. Isn't that uh, awesome? Same with the mist filters as well. I'm fully behind the step up filters. Um, the clip on and screw on lenses for your phones, as well as like the, the egg timer, uh, the kind of security scare, time lapse <laughs> device, that you, whatever we call it. Um, yeah. I think that they're all like genius devices because um, I can see them fitting into lots of different areas of photography. And because they're not, you know, for some of them, they're not that expensive. You know, if anyone's listening and they're just starting out in photography, you think, yeah, I, I could afford it. You know, I could afford, as you say, maybe like 15 pounds, 20 dollars. And, you know, it's something that it's just going to be there constantly, isn't it? You can always go back to and play around with it when you're comfortable. And what I like about, I think, all of those is the reason that I came to buy them is it sparked some kind of inspiration in me. Mm. I was thinking about the end product and how I could use them creatively. And at the end of the day, if you can buy something that's cheap, that gets you using your camera and creating and being inspired, it's well worth doing. And mm. that's how I justify all of my purchases. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you say to your accountant? <laughs> it's lenses, Lowry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I've spent more money on more prisms. <laughs> she just sit there with her head in her hands and go, oh, my God, it's another lens, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Well, I just want to say thank you so much because I've had an absolute awesome time and I've learned so much. You know, there's, there's pieces of equipment that even though, you know, us as tutors, we're always looking at different photography news and information pretty much every day. There's things that will pass us by, you know, it, that's just the speed that the industry moves at really. So it's been absolutely fantastic to kind of get a little bit more of a, of an update and, and kind of an insight as to kind of t- things that I may be missing out on in my kit bag, even that, that I should. So, but if you're listening to this and thinking, oh my God, there's, there's loads of things out there I want to uh, try out, then, then let us know how it goes. If you buy any of these kind of products off the, the back of kind of Emily's recommendations, then let us know kind of how you get on with it and uh, send us some pictures. You can find us on social media everywhere pretty much, aren't we nowadays? Yeah, can't get rid of us. That's it. So yeah, just find us iPhotography or iPhotography course. We're now all over the internet. Uh, And even if there is things that we've not mentioned, things that you've been using a lot in your photography, you know, little gadgets, whatever they may be as well, wherever you found them, let us know because I suppose we can come back and maybe get those items and we can do reviews of them and just let them everybody else know kind of how it works. So yeah, get get in touch as well. But um, I want to say thank you so much again, Emily, for for joining us and going through that because it's been super insightful and I, I hope you've enjoyed it and we can come back and do more episodes in the future. I love talking about photography and gadgets and yes I would do this all day and that's like one of my draws so <laughs> you know we've got loads more we can go through at a later date. <laughs> so we're going through Emily's draws uh, if that yeah. hasn't kind of caught your attention <laughs> you're never going to stay for any other episodes but check out the other episodes if you have enjoyed it hit follow hit subscribe if you're watching this as a YouTube video as well um, it'll be lovely to, to hear from you so kind of please get in touch as well. Um, you can find more at iPhotography.com. And I actually think if you go to iPhotography.com forward slash podcast, you can get information about our courses, our membership and the skill track videos that we were talking about before as well, as, so, as well as some of the iPhotography products that we sell that are really, really useful. But I will leave that page and you can have a look through all that as well. Um, and thank you. Ultimately, Ken, thank you very much for listening. It's been wonderful, hasn't it? Awesome. Thank you very much for listening and good night or good day. Who knows where it is in your That's time That's it, zone. wherever you are, wherever you're listening from as well. Enjoy the rest of your day, evening, weekend, whatever it may be. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.